quick. You all right? What do you want? Mr. Whitaker, you got an appointment to meet with my pa over at Lawyer Betts's. Don't worry, Hoss. I'll get him there. for another dance. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> hey, Oz, look at that old man over there. He's been in here drinking and dancing with Molly all afternoon. <laughs> Most any man half his age would be under the table by now. Boyfriend. Now, you listen to me, Sal. I'm going to give you one minute to get out of here, and then I'm going to pull that dyed hair right out by the roots. Oh, no, I no, heard no. how you lured him over here, you oh, face. Is not but I had to come true. and see it for of course, myself. No, no, right, so be. now you've right. seen. Now, get out. This is my territory. No, 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 you do not send her away. No, of course, she is charming also. Charming? Well, I'm not... You should see this one when she gets out of bed in the morning. Oh, She's really? enough to make a, a strong man die. Oh, no, no, ladies, please. You no, ladies. stay out of this, honey. I have to teach this cruel bait to stay away from my head. Cruel bait? Take that back, you decrepit old bag. Bag! Don't you think we ought to break them up? Yeah, before they start breaking up the fixtures. No, oh, please, gentlemen, no, no, no. Let the ladies have their little fun. I would be willing to pay whatever small damage they cause. You will! <laughs> Certainly not. That would be the height of disrespect. Since it is me they are fighting over. Quite a list, mister. You sure you can pay? No, don't worry, my friend. Do not worry at all. But I am worrying. What is your name, anyway? Lafitte. Jean Lafitte. Hey, there was a famous pirate named Jean Lafitte. You ain't by chance related, are you? Related? My dear friend, I am that Jean Lafitte. <laughs> meeting. I can't wait. Yeah, just take a minute, Paul. Uh, Joel, you tell the lawyer that we'll be... How long? A few minutes? Right. Now, what is it? Come on with me. Paul. Yeah. Do you remember one time telling us about having met Jean Lafitte when your ships were at the same harbor? Yeah, when I was an apprentice seaman. Yeah, down in New Orleans somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. How old would he be now? Well, according to reports, he died a long time ago. Yeah, but that's according to reports now. If he is still alive, how old would he be? Oh, well, I know. I guess maybe about 70. 70, huh? What's all this about? Paul. He's over there in Roy Coffey's jail right now. 
He says he's Lafitte. What's he doing in that jail? Oh, there's a ruckus over at the saloon, and a yeah. couple of women got in a fight over it. A couple of women got in a fight over it. 70-year-old man. Oh, wait till you see this 70-year-old man. Howdy, Ben. Roy. <laughs> you come over to identify our prize prisoner like Hossier said you could? Well, Roy, I come over to have a look at a 70-year-old man. Now, I don't know if I can identify him. I, I was a kid when I saw Lafitte in New Orleans. Besides, I heard he died a long time ago. Now, do you really think that could be him? Well, it could be. After all, he's in my jail. <laughs> ben, what I've heard of this John Lafitte, he was a pirate and a smuggler and a swindler and just about every kind of a rascal known, but this fella sure answers that description. <laughs> he was also a war hero, Roy. Ever since Paul first told me about him when I was just a young man, I got interested in him and I did some research, and I found out if it hadn't been for Jean Lafitte, that we'd have lost the war 1812 at the Battle of New Orleans. Of course, that's right, Hoss. I and mean, he was a uh, pretty bloodthirsty pirate. And then he became a war hero. And he went back to pirating again. Well, let's have a look at this ghost anyway. Well, come on, but I don't think he's no ghost. I think he's just a plain crook, like Sam the bartender's going to testify at the trial. Well, old man, we got somebody here who knew you in the old days. Most interesting. Is this the man? Yeah, that's Ben Cartwright. He wants to know the real John Lafitte. No, you are not old enough to have known me in my prime. Oh, well, I was just a pretty young apprentice even at the time. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid my memory is not that good. Uh, young girls, I remember. Young apprentice seaman. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I understand you're in jail here because a uh, little woman trouble. It was worth it. Those girls were absolutely delightful. And after all, what is there left for a poor, helpless old man but to try to enjoy his few remaining years? Helpless old man? <laughs> Why, you old reprobate, you're just about as helpless as a two headed sidewinder. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's quite respectful to talk to an American hero like that. Him, a war hero? Hoss, oh, all these confidence men try to get you to feel sorry for him. Now, don't let this one fool you. Well, uh, I'll tell you how much he's fooled me. I'm going to bail him out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay all the damages. You what? I'm going to bail him out. Now, look, Hoss, you don't have to get yourself involved in this. this is... Now, Paul, you were the one that told me about the War of 1812 and about Jean Lafitte. Now, if this man happened to be Jean Lafitte, it'd be a crying shame for him to have to spend the last remaining days of his life behind bars. Hoss, you're letting this imposter play in your sympathies. But, Roy, I ain't for sure he is an imposter, and that's just the trouble. I'm going to pay his damages. Well, all right. I got an itemized list here somewhere. Now, look, Hoss, we're already overdue at the lawyer, so let's go over there and you can come back and settle this later. Oh, you go ahead. I'll join you later. All right. See you later, Hoss. All right, Ben. Hey, huh? Well, here's your stuff, your cane. Oh, you might my walking your bag. Hey, you know something? Oh, yes. That's the darnest knife I've ever seen in my life. That, my friend, is a pirate's cutlass, as necessary to my profession as a plow to a farmer. Well, what do you use it for? Slitting throats. <laughs> you know, I never know for sure whether you're joshing or whether you're on a level. Do you know I am never certain myself? <laughs> <laughs> Nice chat. Okay. What did Hoss want, huh? Huh? Oh, I'll tell you about that later. Where's Amos? He won't be here. Well, how are we going to settle anything without him? Well, the, the truth of it is, he was here, but uh, he was so drunk, I had his foreman take him home. Now, look, Walter. I think we've waited just about long enough to get paid for that herd. Amos Whitaker swears that you were paid in full and in cash when you rode out to his place a week ago Tuesday. Well, then he is drunk. Has he got a receipt to prove that? Says he and your father are such old friends that they never bothered with the receipts and such. Well, that's true enough, but what's he trying to say? That I'm cheating him by asking him to pay twice for the same herd? It's a lot of money, Ben. Now, come on, Walter. You don't think I'm trying to pull some trick on him, do you? 
Well, of course not, Ben. I trust you implicitly. Well? The thing is, I trust Amos Whitaker implicitly, too. Oh, he's, he's a difficult man when he's drinking, but... Well, I've never heard of him doing anything even slightly dishonest. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Amos better be sober in the morning, because I'm riding out there to have a talk with him. Go on, Ben. Let me deal with it. Now, I've handled both your affairs for a long time. I promise I'll get to the bottom of it if I have to put aside everything else on my calendar. All right. Thank you, Walter. Well, I'm not being entirely unselfish, Ben. People are going to stop talking and start shooting. How's a lawyer going to make a living? <laughs> so long, Mr. Best. Bye, little girl. Ready to go, Hoss? Oh, hi, Paul. What do you got there? It's a... Uh, it's a diamond. Ain't it pretty? Mr. Lafitte gave it to me. He said he, uh, he got that off of a Greek princess. Yeah, pa was telling me about that new friend of yours, Hoss. He, uh, talked you into buying that thing? He gave it to me. It's a... Uh... Pretty big diamond. What did you give him in return? Just a couple of drinks over there at the gold lily. I bet I know. Then you talked him into taking every bit of money you had on you. Yeah. I'd have done that anyhow, even without this. You know, Joe, they say if you... if you take a, a rock, you put a diamond on top of it, you just tap it. Now, if it's a real diamond, it won't break. Of course, uh, if it isn't a real time, it shatters in little pieces. A rock like that? Yeah. I, I ain't for sure I even want to find it. Well, it's a few hours, I suppose. That man was a famous Jean Lafitte. Oh, such a long walk. Mr. Lafitte, hi. You hoof it all the way out here? Well worth it to see my good friend, Monsieur Hoss, again. What can I do for you, Mr. Lafitte? Oh, yes, I have another gift for you. A most magnificent... ruby. A ruby, huh? Yes, now hold it up to the light. Oh, you see how it glitters in the sun? Do you know how I got that ruby? I myself. I tore it from the finger of a Spanish grandee after boarding his boat in the Straits of Lascar. Yeah? Well, it's, uh... Beautiful. It's mighty, mighty pretty. Accept it from me, please. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Now, now, what can I do for you? Yes. Uh, Monsieur Oss, I will go hungry and homeless. Unless you see fit to extend the hospitality of the Pont de Rosa for a few days. Mr. Lafitte, what'd you do with that money I gave you yesterday? All foolishly squandered on beautiful women. If there is one thing life it enjoys is foolish squandering on beautiful women. I mean, Dad, Mar if you ain't got more gall than any man I ever met, Mr. Lafitte. Yes, I find it very useful. Well, I'll have to talk to my pa and brother. Mr. Lafitte, are you all right? Uh, uh, Sit down. You, right you will please explain to them that a futsal old war veteran is waiting outside. Tell them that the hero of the Battle of New Orleans awaits their decision as to whether or not he will have food this day. You ask them that, Monsieur Us. may take some time to convince them. Monsieur Us, old soldiers have patience, and I have 
great faith in you. And if he turns out to really be Lafitte, we're going to feel pretty foolish, ain't we? Turn him away and all him being a, an American war hero. Oh, a war hero, my foot. He's a swindler. He's a phony. But well, can't you want... What do you got there? It's a, another little gem he gave me. Oh, you got to be kidding. Look at that. It's another phony gem. Now, look, what do I have to do to get it through that thick skull of yours? What does that prove? It just proves Mr. Lafitte's got a bunch of phony jewelry. Well, well forget it. You try and talk to him, Pa. <clears throat> well, uh, it's uh, highly improbable that he's the Mr. Lafitte, the war hero. Huh? But it's not entirely impossible. Huh? So uh, I suggest we compromise. Let's have him here in our home as our guest for the next couple of days. But let's keep a very careful eye on all the silverware. You know, if Adam was here right now, he would agree with me. Well, he ain't here. He's in San Francisco and Mr. Lafitte's staying, and that's all there is to it. Hey, Pa, you mind if I uh, take a look at those books of yours? You want to look at books? Yeah, I thought I might uh, read up on the War of 1812. <laughs> when he's sober. Huh? Mr. Whitaker. What's on your mind, boy? Sir, you... You know my Paul well enough, or you certainly ought to, to know that he ain't gonna try to cheat you. He took my money, and he swears he didn't. Now, some folks call that cheating. Well, it's some sort of misunderstanding. I'm certain if you two could get together, talk. There's nothing I'd like better than to talk to Ben Carteret. I've been looking forward for a long time to telling him exactly what I think of him. Well, why weren't you in shape to do just that with Lawyer Betts' office the other day? Lawyer Betts? What are you talking about? This is the first I've been in town in a long time. Mr. Whitaker, I seen you with my own two eyes come out of this saloon Friday. All your bets said you showed up at his office and drunk you couldn't talk. And he sent you home. Sometimes I don't remember. But I get drinking pretty heavy. That's my business, not yours. Yeah. Mr. 
Mr. Whitaker. Look, why don't you let me alone? Isn't it enough that you've lied to me and cheated me? Monsieur, do not talk like that to a friend of Jean Lafitte, or you will find you have no throat to talk through. Mr. Lafitte, please. I can take care of this, I assure you. Very well, if you insist, but you. Remember. Sorry about that. He, he's just a harmless old man. What I was about to ask you was, had you been drinking hard that day you claimed that you paid my paw for that herb? My foreman was there. He saw me hand your father that money. Then Tully told you about it the next day, huh? Mr. Whitaker, I've never known you to lie. And certainly not my Paul. But I'm sorry, I, I can't say the same thing for Tully. My Paul would be more than happy to ride out to your place at your convenience. Anytime tomorrow. Talk this thing over with you and try to get it settled. But you know, this coffee should have a little chicory in it in the style of New Orleans. I will tell Hopsing the secret. You know, for a man ain't had no sleep, you're mighty chipper this morning, Mr. Lafitte. Yeah, how do you do it? Clean living, my boy. Clean living. No. It's all very pleasant. I gotta go to see him, Miss Whitaker. Don't lose your temper, Father. All right, come on in. Come on. I'm sorry, I'm just leaving, but uh, you're going to have some coffee with the boys. Well, thanks. Uh, where are you heading, Ben? I'm going to see Amos Whitaker. You save yourself a trip. Hmm? Amos is dead. What? What happened to him, Roy? Somebody slit his throat. With this. My cutlass, of course. During all the gaiety at the saloon last night, it was either lost or stolen. And that must have been after you threatened Whitaker. Oui. I first noticed it was missing after Monsieur Haas left for home around uh, midnight, I should say. And you two weren't together all evening? No, sir. Mr. Lafitte stayed at the saloon after I left. Mr. Lafitte, we figured that Amos Whitaker was murdered about 3 o'clock this morning. Now, where were you at that time? I cannot compromise a lady. Well, if you cannot come up with something better than that, you're in real trouble. Sheriff, before you start making any charges, maybe you ought to check and find out where Amos Whitaker's foreman was at 3 o'clock this morning. I know where Tully was. He was getting his throat slit, too. On my honor, as a soldier who was decorated by the American government, I had nothing to do with these killings. Just the same, you're going to have to come along with me. All right. We'll see that you have a, a defense lawyer. You are most kind. Um, you, you look at that broiled lizard tongue. A very interesting dish. Now, what are you talking about? That's the most tender chicken there is to be had anywhere. Then what is your secret recipe that makes it taste like broiled lizard tongues? Hiya, Johnny boy. Oh, just in time. When I'm old. Mr. Lafitte, Molly here says that she was the one you was out with the other night, and right during the time the murder took place. So I reckon that clears everything up, huh, Roy? That's right. Johnny Boy and I went for a buggy ride after we left the saloon. Oh, it was very romantic. We must have stayed out till almost 2 o'clock in the morning. No, it was much later than that, ma chérie. You remember the beautiful sunrise as we returned? Sunrise? What sunrise? This sunrise. The one you and I watched this morning together. Just uh, tell the truth, Miss Molly. 
exactly as you remember it. Well, the truth is, it, it was just before two o'clock when I got back to my room at the hotel. Well, that would have given Johnny Boy here plenty of time to ride out Damus Whitaker's ranch for three o'clock in the morning, wouldn't it? I uh, think that'll be all, Miss Travers. I'm sorry, Johnny Boy. It's been fun up to now. Molly. Johnny Boy. Molly. Right there. Lying. It is her word against mine. Uh, I mean no offense, Mr. Lafitte. But as your lawyer, it is my duty to point out that yours is the word of a, a pirate with an extremely spotty record. Lawyer Betts, you think that Mr. Lafitte's past will have any influence on the jury? Jurors are only human. I think it might make a very big difference. In that case, Gentlemen, I have a small confession to make. I am not Jean Lafitte. You ain't Jean Lafitte? And you spent all this time convincing folks you were? Let us say I am an old man who enjoys his little joke. Making fools out of folks. Is that your idea of a joke? I am sorry, messieurs. I am very sorry. I have lied to you often, but this, I swear to you, is the truth. I did not kill Monsieur Whitaker or his foreman. And I reckon you're willing to swear to that on your honor as a great American hero, huh? Mm -hmm. I do not blame you for no longer believing in me. Again, Mr. Lafitte, or whatever his name is, I'll be right back. I'm sorry, Hoss. You know, I, I reckon I'm pretty stupid, but for some reason or other, boy, I can't keep from believing him when he tells me he didn't kill him two men. Now, why, why should you think that makes you stupid? He, uh, he happens to be a man who lives by his wits. You happen to be a fellow who lives by your heart, and, you know, I think I like your way better. Well, it don't make no difference, I reckon, because I've had it with him. All his tall tales and his lies and his fake jewelry. I mean, really, Paul, I've had it with him. Oh, uh, how kind of you to bring me fresh linen. It's all right, uh, Mr. Lafitte. Uh, Monsieur Oz, I hate to ask, but when a man's life is at stake, he will risk anything, any humiliation. Mm-hmm. Just one last small favor. Like? The very beautiful Mademoiselle Molly will be in her room at the hotel right now. I would appreciate it very much if you would talk to her and ascertain why she stole my cutlass. Mr. Lafitte, why are you so all fired sure that it was Molly that stole your cutlass? Because I know women. Now off with you to Mademoiselle Molly before she leaves for the dance hall. Dad. I reckon I'm some kind of a dang fool or something. Monsieur Oz, just please believe me innocent of those murders, whatever else you may believe of me. Johnny Boy's cutlass while he and I were dancing together, huh? 
And then after that, I suppose I slipped it to a confederate and took Johnny Boy buggy riding until dawn. Is that it? Oh, no, Miss Molly, it ain't what I think. It's... You know, Haas, that two-faced old rascal's really got you bamboozled. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get to work. Yes. Yeah. Away. What are you doing? Not until I have sliced this so beautiful little lady into not so beautiful little pieces. Oh, Hoss, Hoss, he's just local enough to do it. You will die by inches. You will die slowly, oh. slowly. Oh. Ah, no, no, no. Feet, Mr. Lafitte! <laughs> no. Uh, I must follow her, please. I must find out where she goes. You're going right back to jail where you belong. That's where you're going. If Lafitte gives you his word of honor that he will return to the jail cell at once, will you follow her? Yeah, but you ain't Lafitte, remember? Yeah. You're a fake. Even an imposter has honor. There, you see? She runs down the street. Does she run to the sheriff's office? No, she runs in the opposite direction to her unknown accomplice. You must follow her. You must. Or forfeit me to the hangman. All right, but if you're making a fool out of me again... Back to the jail cell, I swear to you. Not the s'il vous plaît. Je vous en prie. Vite, vite. All right, I'll follow her, but you back to the jail, you hear? <laughs> Did not Lafitte keep his word as always? Did I not return to my cell? He must not have stayed very long. What are you doing with Roy's hat and coat on in here? It is a disguise. Now I'm accomplice to a jailbreak. Take heart, Monsieur Hoss. All will be straightened out in due course. Now, what about Mademoiselle Molly? That's something else. She didn't go to no Confederate. She went to her lawyer. That's where she went. So? What lawyer? Same one you got. Walter Betts. Oh. She didn't get to see him, though. There's a note on his door said he wouldn't be back till after supper. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Lafitte is counting on his good friend for one last small favor. What more do you want from me, anyhow? My whole defense depends upon it. Now follow me. Mr. Betts' back door. Looks like any other door to me. Would you mind keeping your eye on this street while I make my examination, please? Well, make it snappy, because Mr. Betts is going to be back here in a minute. How long are you going to have to study that door, Mr. Lafitte? Mr. Lafitte? You didn't tell me you was going to break in here. Would you have allowed it? I certainly wouldn't. You see? Oh, what are you figuring on finding in here anyhow? Evidence that lawyer Betsy is Mademoiselle Molly's accomplice. That ain't the silliest dang thing I ever heard of. Oh, is it? Lawyer Betsy is honest clean through. Ah, monsieur, did I not fool you into thinking that I was Jean Lafitte? You sure did. 
Then is it not possible that Lawyer Betts could have fooled you into thinking that he is honest, clean, through? Yeah, what makes you suspect him? It could be nobody else. He made a brief appearance in the saloon that night after you left, and Mademoiselle Molly could very easily have slipped in my cutlass. There was no other explanation. Oh, yes, there is. There's one. Oh, yeah, indeed. What, 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 what? That uh, you could still be the murderer after all. Could I look you in the eye if that were true? Yep, and pick my pocket while you've done it. Well, since you understand me so well, you must know that I could not have murdered those two men, no? Huh? Thank you, Monsieur Hoss. Now, please, one small favor. Will you continue looking for evidence? Hey, wait a minute. Mr. Feet, how am I going to find what I don't even know what I'm looking for? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait just a dang minute. What do you think you're doing, anyhow? This safe, it was behind the picture. I can't do that. That's burglary. Mm -hmm. Everything will be all right. You wait and see, Monsieur Us. Almost exactly the same amount Mr. Whitaker claimed to have given your father. Whew. Hey, will the sheriff see that? Oh, it would be a mistake to give it to the sheriff. A man as shrewd as Mr. Betts would no doubt have some explanation as to how he came by such a huge sum. What are we going to do then? Several things. One, we can return the money to the safe and lock it up. Oh, we can put the picture back in place on the wall so that Mr. Betts will not know that his secret has been discovered. And, uh, three, three, three. Ah. <clears throat> can you see me here? Nope. Then three, I will hide here. And for you, I suggest, uh... The closet. We're gonna hide out till the lawyer gets back, right? Exactly. Then we find out what Mademoiselle Molly has to say to him. Yeah, but what if he catches us? Always you look on the gloomy side. Why cannot you be more cheerful? You will not have to remain there more than one hour at the most. Gagged Sheriff Coffee in his own jail and then escaped. Good. Good. The old buzz is threatening to kill me. Well, no, I'll ask the sheriff to appoint a deputy to guard you. You'll be safe. And Lafitte's escaping will be considered an admission of guilt. You know, you're smart, Walter. So smart you sometimes worry me. You get people trusting you, and then. And then? And then, like Tully. What about Tully? Tully played square with us all the way through. You paid him off with a slit throat. Isn't a two-way split better than a three? And what happens to me if you decide a one-way split is better than two? I rode all the way to Morgan City today to make the arrangements to buy a dance hall with the money from this deal. You're going to run it with me as a silent partner. Now, does that sound like a double cross? every word we said. Unbuckle the gun belt. 
Drop it. Where's Lafitte? Oh. You never were a very good liar, Hoss. He's around here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Well, Hoss isn't tricky enough to pull something like this on his own. Where is he? I said I didn't know. No place here he could hide except... Deceitful, conniving old... How long were you in that closet? About an hour. Your Honor, may I address the court? I came home from a business trip, found a prowler in my office. It was dark and I shot him before I realized it was Hoss Cartwright. And to this day, I have no idea what he was doing there. Well, Your Honor? Killing Amos Whitaker was bad enough. Tully was even worse, but... But Haas... I suppose you'd rather the law hung both of us. Somewhat out of breath is all. When one reaches the age of 70, it is time to give up acrobatics. And here, never, never put such temptation in my path again. Oh. Look well, here, uh, Mr. Lafitte, you could have got away with that. How come you didn't? Because... You believed in me. You were my friend. And a feat never abandons a friend. Uh, at least not very often. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where you find these stories. Uh, <laughs> now, look, before you leave, you must do us one small little favor. Well, certainly. Now, tell us who you are. Who? I, I mean, who you are really. Who I am, really? I'm Jean Lafitte, of course. But, Mr. Lafitte, when you were in the jail cell, you said that... Because at that time it was inconvenient for me to be Jean Lafitte, but now with the charges against me being dismissed, I am free to resume my true identity. I see. Well, uh, where are you going to go now, Mr. Lafitte? Where will I go now? Where the music is gay. Where the wine is good, and where the women are beautiful. Hey, bien. Now, oh, Monsieur Oz, one small last favor, if you please. I thank you very much. Mes amis, au revoir. <laughs> you know, I don't think he's ever going to change. No, I guess not. Hey, 
Look what the old phony gave me. Another diamond. Hey, no, another one? <laughs> what did you give him in return this time? <laughs> the horse he's riding? No. The second best saddle I own. And every penny I had to my name. But boy, it's worth it. The stories the old guy told. I know. He was telling me one just the other day, a new one. Yeah. See, he was boarding this ship all along, yeah. single handedly. Yeah. So he had his yeah. sword hey, and he jumped down. Yeah. This is a real diamond. Yeah, I know. So he jumped. I don't suppose that really is. Heading up for the rocks above the old lumber road. Hey, you see what I see? If he gets in that brush, we've lost him for sure. Look, I'll circle around and try to cut him off. You keep on his trail. Right. Don't worry, sweetheart. The doctor says there's a very good chance you'll see again. You mean that, Papa? You're not lying to me? Hey, he's not lying to you, sis. You're going to be just fine, but it's going to take a while. Oh, Papa, how are we going to manage? You can't afford to put me into a hospital. We're staying with the Cartwrights. They're going to foot all the bills. Can they afford it? From what I've seen of the size of their spread, they can afford almost anything. And they owe it to you. It's the least they can do for what they've taken away from you. And Joseph, will you settle down? You're acting as if it were your first day out instead of hers. I'm sorry, Pa. That I've been trying to see her ever since the accident. I just don't understand why her father won't let me go near her. Well, I think his concern is natural. I just want to tell her how sorry I am. I think you'll have your chance right now. Papa, I'm scared. Don't be afraid. We'll hold you. Come on. There it is. That's fine. Fine. Oh, good 
Good morning. Good morning. One more. Well. Well, good morning, good morning. And how's our lovely young patient this morning? Who's that? I've, I'm Ben Cartwright. Uh, she's feeling quite chipper. This is the first day without the bandages. It feels good to get out of that room for a change. I'm sure it does. Papa, could I maybe get a little fresh air? Sure. I, I was hoping she might like something like that. Who's that? It's, uh, it's little Joe, Tessa. Look, I... Thought you might like a little ride. I've got the carriage outside. I got the horse all hitched up. It's wrong, car, right? You trying to ease out from under a guilty conscience? Lon, that's no way to talk. You shouldn't turn the back of your hand to a generous offer. If little Joe would like to take her for a ride, I think that would be nice if Tessa would enjoy it. Oh, well, I, I'd enjoy anything that would take me out into the fresh air for a while, Papa. So we better get started then. There's an awful lot of the Ponderosa to see. Uh, what, Tessa? Uh, I'll see you later, Papa. Enjoy yourself. Oh. We've been riding for quite a while. You want to get out and stretch your legs a bit? Oh, I'd like that. Over here, would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. This way. Yeah, it's right, right oh. behind you. Yes, I found it. <sighs> One of my favorite spots. Come here and fish when I was a kid. It feels very pretty. Tell me what it looks like. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of trees around. Some pretty big trees. And uh, well, there's a slope over there with some cattle on it. Not very many of them. And. Uh, a little stream running by. There's a lot of birds and ducks. There's a blue jay in this tree right here. It sounds beautiful. Tessa, I'm so sorry. If I could give you my eyes, I would. It wasn't your fault. It was an accident. It was my fault that it happened. No, don't blame yourself. Let's talk about something else. I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Tell me about yourself. Have you lived here all your life? Yeah, I was born here. I envy you. I've been on the move all my life. My pa doesn't seem to stay in one spot very long. What does your father do? Oh, a little bit of everything. Well, you might say that pa's been looking for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Did he ever find it? Not yet. I suppose he will. He, he doesn't give up too easily. Oh, I'm starting to get a little cold. Oh. Yeah, we, we better be getting back then. I don't want to keep you out too long the first day. Okay. Tessa, I'll cut that for you. Oh, thank you. You're getting too fast for me, little Joe. 
Doesn't a father have any prerogative in taking care of his daughter? It's my pleasure. Fine. Now, there's something that I've been wanting to say to all of you. You Cartwrights have been awfully good to us. I don't know what would have happened to us if you hadn't have taken us in. That was the least we could do. Tessa, the meat's on the left and vegetables are on the right. Yeah. And if I've been short-tempered and mean these past few days, why, uh, it isn't because of what happened to Tessa there. It's... Well, we've had some plans, and those plans are pretty well gone now. What plans? A job out in California. Paid well, too, but I... I had to be there by a certain time, and the time's passed now. Are you sure it's too late now? Quite sure. That really isn't very important. What is important is the uh, young man that was waiting for Tessa. Met him out in Missouri about a year ago. He was on his way to California. He's going to make his fortune. Said he'd send for Tessa, and he did, a couple of months ago. Papa, I... Oh, it's true. The engagement is off, Tessa. It seems he uh, doesn't want to marry a blind woman. Comfortable? Pa? Pa, what was all that about down there? What do you mean? I mean, all those lies you were telling at dinner, all that talk about a job for you and a fiancé for me, I, I don't understand. Why were you lying like that? Well, now, were they really such terrible lies? Maybe one day there will be a job for me and a fiancé for you. Who knows? Baba, you're not trying to make the Cartwrights feel even more guilty, are you? To make them look after us even better than they do now? Guilty? Tessa, I, I, I'm doing this for you and Lon. Ever since you were little, I promised you that one day we'd have something. Well, that day has come. We've, we've found the end of the rainbow, and it, it has a name. Cartwright. Papa, the, they're good, decent people. You can't take advantage of them that way. No one's trying to take advantage of them. Aren't you forgetting that it was little Joe's bullet that blinded you? Whatever the, the Cartwrights are doing for us, they owe us. Papa, little Joe's a nice boy. I can't see him, but I can feel what he's going through. And it was an accident. Is uh, little Joe beginning to mean something to you? No. I just don't feel the need to hurt him anymore. No one wants to hurt him. And after all, we may be doing him some good. After all, knowing a wonderful girl like you shouldn't be a hardship on any man. Now, you try to get some rest. I'll, I'll lick in on you after a bit. Do you want to go for a walk or you want to sit around here? Oh, I think I'd like to sit for a while. Okay. Here, when you sit down, it's a rocker. Oh, thank you. Okay. I don't know what I'd do without my eyes. Oh. I like being your eyes, Tessa. Tessa, the fellow in California, the one you were engaged to, I suppose you loved him very much. Why do you ask? I don't know, you just... Strike me as the kind of girl who'd have to love a man very much to marry him. Yes, I'm that kind of girl. 
I've been able to forget him at all. Isn't that the best way? I guess so. Tessa, suppose a man came along someday and, and asked you to marry him. How would you feel about it? Well, that would depend on why he wanted to marry me, Joe. Because of my blindness, he might mistake love for pity, and... Well, I just don't think that would be a very sound basis for marriage. No, I guess not. A woman has pride. She, she wants a man to love her for herself alone, not... because he feels sorry for her. Talk as though you don't believe a man could love you just for yourself alone. I don't know. Would you take me in now? I'm I'm getting kind of tired. If that's what you want. So funny. <laughs> Just reading Dickens. <laughs> you, you must read this. <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to talk to you. <laughs> you you've got to read this book, Joe. <laughs> if it's kind of important. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm so involved. Yeah. Well, uh, what would you say if? Uh, if I told you I was going to ask Tessa to marry me. Well, she's a... She's a fine girl, Joseph. I think that any man would be proud to call her his wife. Good. What about, uh... What about Tessa? What does she feel? I, I think she cares for me a lot. Maybe as much as I care for her. Of course, uh, there's quite a difference between caring for a person and, uh, and loving them. <laughs> oh, Pa, don't you see? It, it's a perfect answer for all of her problems. Now, who can take better care of her for the rest of her life than a husband? Joe. Joe, you make me feel real good. You have a sense of responsibility, that's good. But I... I don't want to... make a martyr of yourself because of an unfortunate... Pa, there is no martyrdom involved. It would be a good marriage. An unfortunate accident, Joe. Her blindness is my problem. Now, Joe, you have a life of your own to live. Now, Pa, I want you to get used to the idea because I'm going to ask Tessa to marry me. Well, Hello, Joe. Thought I'd come a little early, see if Tessa wanted to go for a ride. Well, she's already gone riding with her brother. Got me worried. They should have been back hours ago. Which trail they take? Well, they went off the North Ridge there. I'll find them. You're all right, just keep coming. Lon! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for you to get hurt, but I can't watch you every minute. Okay, mount up. No! Tessa, we gotta get back to the ranch now. You can't walk all that way. No, Lon, I'm scared. I don't want to. Oh, come on, mount up. What do you expect me to be, your nursemaid the rest of your life? I'm your brother, not your husband. No, You ever hurt Tessa again, and I'll kill you. Tessa, you all right? Oh, yes, Joe, I'm all right. 
You're the one blinded her. Now you take care of her. You know, one thing your brother said made sense. You need a husband to take care of you the way she'd be taken care of. Who'd want to marry a blind girl? I would if you'd have me. Yes, I would if you'd have me. Mr. Cartwright? Oh, yes, Tessa, here I am. Could I speak to you for a moment, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, of course. Uh, why don't you sit down over here? There's the chair right behind you now. Uh, would you like some coffee? No, thank you. Mr. Cartwright. Yes, dear. Little Joe asked me to marry him today. Did he tell you? Yes, yes, he did tell me. He also told me that you, uh, you refused to give him an answer. Why? Oh, Mr. Cartwright, if I could just look into little Joe's eyes right this minute, I... Well, if I could see that there was love there and not just pity and guilt, I'd say yes so fast it would make your head spin. He means so much? Oh, yes. But I can't see what's in his eyes. That's why I've come to you. You're his father, and you know him better than anyone else. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, please tell me what to do. Well, that's, uh... It's very difficult. I, I don't... I don't think anyone can... tell you what to do. But I think that if two people love each other, I mean, truly, deeply love each other, well, then nothing else matters, does it? Not even, not even blindness. Because there's so many other things that they can share together. Be sure. Where can I find the answer? In your heart, Tessa. In your heart. If, if I should say yes, if we should get married, you won't hate me. You won't think I'm marrying little Joe just because I need him. No, Tessa. I don't think you're that kind of girl. I don't think you're the kind of girl who'd marry anyone for selfish reasons. Papa? Over here. Papa, where's little Joe? Oh, they all had to go into town on business. They'll be right back. Say, you better hurry up and get some breakfast before it gets cold. I'll be right there. Everything. 
I've got to tell little Joe. Tessa. Papa, I'm whole again. I'm the way he'd want me to be. Oh, Bob, I can't wait till he gets back. Tessa, are you sure this is the right way? Oh, Papa, he's got to know. He's got to know as soon as possible. Don't you see? He, he won't feel guilty anymore. And, and I'll be able to see what's in his eyes. Well, maybe it isn't all that easy. What are you getting at? Well, suppose that little Joe doesn't love you the way that you think that he ought. Suppose there is a small element of pity and, and, and guilt in the way he feels about you. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't some love, and I'm not saying that this love doesn't grow every day that you two are together, but has it grown strong enough? Maybe if you blurt out the truth now, why, this whole thing will be over. It'll be, it'll be finished. Papa, he loves me. And the fact that I can see again will only make him love me more. Of course. But why take unnecessary chances? Wait until after you're married and then tell him. And that way, no harm will come to anyone. Pa's right. What's so terrible about pretending you're blind a little longer? Of course. And, 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 and women have been setting their caps for men down through the ages. And, and the intelligent thing to do is, uh, is to win the man first and then tell him the truth. Papa, it's because I love little Joe that I owe him the truth. Don't you understand? I can see again. I don't need to marry little Joe anymore unless he really loves me. And what about Lon and me? Don't you care what happens to us one little bit? Papa, you and Lon... Do you realize what's in store for us if we have to leave here now? No money, no jobs, nothing. Papa... Tessa, I'm 53 years old. All my life, I've been waiting for something good to happen to me. All my life, I've been tending to you and to Lon. Don't take this chance away from me. Don't... Don't take it away from all of us. Papa, what are you asking me to do? He's asking you not to turn on your own flesh and blood. I don't want to turn against you. Just tell me what you want me to do. I want you to play blind until after you're married to little Joe. Do it for me. Do it for Lon. You, you owe it to us. I can't do that. Tessie. Papa, I can't. It's our last chance to get Papa. anything. Oh, another thing. First thing tomorrow morning, we go up to the north section, see how many camps have been dropped. Tessa, what's the matter? You look upset. Tessa, what's wrong? Nothing's happened, little Joe. I guess I'm just tired of being blind. Take me upstairs, Papa. Tessa? Tessa, come on. What's the matter? You've been avoiding me the past few days. I don't know. Nothing's the matter. Come on, now. There is something the matter. You're just not the same girl anymore. I wish I knew what kind of girl I really am. I know what kind of girl you are. I asked you a question a week ago, and I'm still waiting for an answer. Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. Oh, Joe, please. Tessa, I want to marry you. I want to marry you now, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Are you sure that's what you really want? Yes, I'm sure. 
That's what I want more than anything else in the world. Does the police say yes? All right. I'll marry you. Pa? Hey, Pa? He must be in the barn. I'll go get him. You be all right? Yeah, fine. just went upstairs, Joe. Joseph, it's wonderful. Oh, she already told you about us getting married. Well, no. Pa, I finally convinced her. Pa, I'm gonna fill her life with so much love that her blindness won't matter. I'll be her eyes for the rest of her life. Well, come on, aren't you gonna congratulate me? Oh, of course. I... Of course. You don't look too happy about it. Well, she's a... She's a remarkable girl, Joseph. Of course she is. She couldn't be any more right for me, Pa. Joe, are you, are you sure? Are you absolutely sure about her? I know my own mind. Of course you do. I, I don't suppose you've set the date yet. No, the sooner the better. Just give us enough time to invite some friends and neighbors. Don't you think it might be an idea? After all, you don't know each other that well. Perhaps if you, if you waited a bit, we know each other well enough. Yes, but what do you what do you think of the idea? Maybe, maybe we should take her to San Francisco and have a have a doctor examine her eyes. Pa, the... I'm, I'm not kidding myself about her. She's blind, and I made her that way. I know, but they're always developing new techniques. I don't want to hurt her any more than I have already. I love her the way she is. Come on, Pa, don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Joseph, I... You're my son, and... I just want the best for you. The very best. And stop worrying. I think I got the best. I know I got the best, Pa. Hey, better go upstairs and see her. Hey, Paul. Little Joe find you? Hmm? Little Joe find you? Yes, he found me. He told you about the wedding, huh? Yes. Paul, you don't you don't seem very happy about it. You uh you ain't worried just because Tess is blind, are you? Oh, she isn't blind. She what? I said she isn't blind. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. A little while ago when little Joe was looking for me, I went to the back way. And there she was in front of that mirror in the living room, primping. And then she ran up those stairs like the wind. She can see better than you or me. Oh, that, that only makes sense. I know it doesn't. What? You mean she's just been playing a game with us? I don't know. I just don't know. You want to tell a little joke? Of course, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I'll tell you something. I like that girl. I think she likes little Joe enough. Maybe she even loves little Joe enough to tell him the truth about herself before this goes much further. What if she don't? We're going to have to give her that chance.
morning, Tessa. Good morning. Oh, the flowers, they... They smell beautiful. Yeah, the place is really getting gussied up. It's gonna look beautiful for the wedding. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just straightening things up a little bit. Joe, I have some good news for you. Oh, yeah? What's that? I think my eyesight is beginning to come back to me. What? It's just been in the last couple of days. I, But I, I can see a little bit of light. Now, but I had to be sure before I said anything to you. Tessa, can you see me? No, no not clearly, but... I, I know I will. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God you're going to see again. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, God. Now you won't have to feel guilty anymore. I mean... Now you, you don't have to marry me if you don't want to. What do you mean? Perfect chance for you to back out. Oh, don't say that, Tessa. Please don't say that. I asked you to marry me and I meant it. Are you sure, Joe? Are you very sure? I'm sure. Of course I am. Yes? May a future father-in-law come in? Certainly. Isn't she a dream, Mr. Cartwright? Well, she certainly is. You did a beautiful job, Mrs. Partridge. Of course, you had a, a beautiful subject to work with. Oh. Oh, Mrs. Partridge, uh, may I have a moment alone with Tessa? Why, sure. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I know it's a uh, father's prerogative to have a few moments with his daughter at a time like this, but is it also a uh, father-in-law's? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, actually, I... I came to wish you everything well. And to tell you what a wonderful girl I think you really are. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cartwright. Do you think I deserve all that? Yes, I'm sure. You know, all through the years, I prayed that when one of my sons was ready to marry, he'd choose a young woman who was worthy, who loved him deeply, and who knew that he loved her and would always have his best interests at heart. And you think I'm that kind of girl? I know you are. Because, you see, I think you love and respect little Joe enough so that you'd always do what's best for him, what's right for him, what's right for both of you, no matter what the cost. Bless you, Tessa. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Nothing. It was nothing.
tears at a time like this? It's, it's just my nerves, Papa. It's just my nerves. Well, now, they're all waiting for you. You ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. I'll get my bouquet, Papa. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here together in the sight of God and the presence of this company to join this man and this woman in holy wedlock. Joseph Cartwright, do you take this woman, Tessa Caldwell, for your lawful wedded wife, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and cherish her for as long as you both shall live? I do. Tessa Caldwell, do you take this man, Joseph Cartwright, for your lawful wedded husband, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love, honor, and obey him for as long as you both shall live? I guess I've known all along I was asking you to do the wrong thing. <laughs> See. Joe, go away. Yes, now look at me. You can see. Yes, I've been able to for days. Well, then why didn't you tell me? My papa was afraid that you'd back out of the marriage if you knew. That's why he made up that story about the man who was waiting for me in California. Oh, don't you see, Joe? We've been using you, taking advantage of your guilt. You told me yesterday you were getting your sight back. Why didn't you tell me the whole truth then? Why did you wait till the ceremony? I guess because I didn't want to disappoint Papa. And mainly because I... I didn't want to face the truth about us. And what is the truth? That your feeling of love for me was really guilt. And that my feeling of love for you was really fear of, of being alone in the darkness. Well, then you, you don't love me, not really. Not enough for marriage, Joe. Neither of us do. I have been so afraid to say anything. I I didn't want to hurt you anymore. I know. That's why I had the courage to do what I did. You know, my pa was right about you. You, 
You're a very remarkable girl. <laughs> and you can't write your remarkable family. I kind of hate to face the truth. Me too. Better get on until the guests take and I'll go home. Yeah. Be all right. Yes. friend of mine in San Francisco. Now, if you were to deliver this to him personally, I think he might be able to find a job for your father and your brother. You mean you're willing to help us after what we tried to do to you? Oh, Tessa. Yes, <laughs> your heart wasn't in it. Anyway, I told you, you're just not that kind of girl. Well, you're on your way. Yep. No, I want to tell you something. You are the prettiest girl that I ever almost married. <laughs> and you're the handsomest man. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Well, Mr. Kyright, thank you for your many kindnesses, even though it didn't uh, turn out to be a pot of gold. <laughs> oh, Papa, any pots of gold from now on will be made by our own hands. That's a depressing thing to learn at my age. But we'll try. <laughs> Goodbye, Ben. Marcus, I'm glad everything turned out well. Thank you. Bye, Tessa. Bye. Here. On. Brother, are you about ready to accompany our Paul on his annual cultural trip up to the Paiute Nation? Well, I guess so, since I had no choice. <sighs> since I'm elected, I'm ready. Well, see if you can keep him from bringing home all that junk this time. Wait, just a minute. That isn't junk. That's genuine and very fine Indian artwork. About time you boys learn something about Indian art and customs and language. Some of the finest hides I've ever seen in my life. Hey, you want to know something? This is a fact, too. This is true. Those Pai women hand-chew those hides. That's why they're so soft. Bet they got the strongest teeth in the territory. <laughs> Sometimes I sense a certain lack of sensitivity in my sons. All right, let's get those steers out. We're a little late now. Greetings, old friend. Well, your English is improving. Uh, better. Well, we uh, brought you the best beef we could pick out. Good. You, good man. That's so. We've had good trading. And now I have a gift which I would offer you in honor of our long friendship. It's a, it's a watch. For telling time. I am honored with friend's gift. Will treasure long time. 
I have gift for friend. Young maiden, she yours. Gift of Indian maiden? Not Indian. White girl. Taken many, many years ago. Good girl. Work hard. Teach me English. My son casts eyes on her. Not good. My son marry Paiute. This one. Let's go. White name, Joan. Ita! That's not. Then me, man, Kuba. Let's be! Did you say he'd kill her? If she ever came back to the tribe, he would. Doesn't leave you much choice, does it? I guess we better. Three days? It seems a lot longer to me. Why? Well, you just saw her just that once when we brought her home. She's been up in her room ever since. Well, I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about what it's been like to live with Pa. I've never seen him so upset. Pa's got quite a problem. He's got a problem. He's got a tiger by the tail is what he's got. That's a great sense of responsibility. I mean, the chief doesn't give gifts lightly. Gift? That's some gift. I'll bet you this ends Pa's annual cultural trek to the Paiute Nation. Oh, I don't know. I think Pa will probably return a favor next year, bring the chief something nice, like a lighted stick of dynamite. <laughs> yeah, or a, or a loco steer. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe he'll make a gift to you, Hoss. <laughs> Very funny. I'm glad somebody's happy about something. No luck, huh? No, she won't eat. She give you any reason? She won't talk either. Look, Paul, maybe you ought to just give up and... And, and what? I'd be very happy to give up. Somebody else will take the responsibility. The doctor won't even come out here. He says, eventually, her hunger will overcome her stubbornness. The sheriff was no help either. Well, I thought Roy was kind of droll. Droll? He's downright sarcastic is what he was. Why, Adam, what did uh, Roy say? Well, he suggested that uh, Pa get himself another watch, like a grandfather's clock, and maybe renegotiate with the chief. <laughs> Very funny. No, well, he's got a point there. You might just try to explain to him that things aren't working out very well. Adam, you know perfectly well you can't return a gift to a Paiute chief. Besides, he meant what he said. They'd kill her. No eat now, food not fit to eat. All right, Hopson, we'll eat now. Indian girl no like Hopsing food? I said we'll eat now. She loco. Hopsing, we're going to eat right now. Will you stop yelling in my ear? Hey, Paul, I got an idea. Listen, all this good food, she gets a smell of this, she'll eat, I guarantee you. I'll just make a plate of it, 
I'll take it up there to her and I'll hold it out in the hall and just let her get a waft of it through the door. I guarantee you she'll eat. Uh, that, that's not a very good idea. Uh, It'll work, Paul. I tell you, it's not a very... So she eats, then what? Well, she should be given a chance to learn to live with her own kind of people. She's been living as, a, as an Indian since she was a child. It won't be easy for her. What do you want us to do to help? I suppose we should be understanding and patient. Help her make an adjustment. <laughs> She ain't hungry. <laughs> he was right, Paul. That's it. What are you going to do, Paul? You give that lady a very necessary talking to. What's he mean by that, Ed? Well, you must remember that expression from when you were a kid. <clears throat> You don't, you don't mean he's gonna... I'm afraid so. Now, we've tried every reasonable way we know. But you still persist in this stubborn refusal to do anything we ask you to do. Well, I'm giving you three seconds to get downstairs hey, to... I know that the Paiutes taught too many unpleasant expressions. So I'm not going to hold that against you, young lady. I spit on your grandmother, Come Shadow! Here. Boy, she's a feisty one. She throws a pretty mean plate, too. You know, frankly, I sort of wish Bo hadn't gone back up there. It's a long ride this time of night to fetch a doctor. Oh, I think I put my money on Pa this time. Oh, yeah? How much? Well, Pa? She'll be down in a minute. Hop Singh? We got a fresh plate here. Plate in bed. Conversation at the same we had upstairs. Put a little gravy on there. How do you make it so shiny? I spit on your Joan. Bear fat. 
Yeah, I... I thought I recognized that odor. Uh, Paul, if you don't mind, there's a sick horse out there in the barn. I think I'll go out and take care of him. Uh, I think I better go help you, Pop. Excuse me. Sure. Good. Missy, eat now. It's good, yes? It's good. No? I'm saying I'll call you if I need you. I got two of everything so that you could uh, uh, alternate them and keep them clean that way. It's, it's pretty, isn't it? What is this? Oh, uh, that's, uh, well, that's, that's a, it's a, a camisole. It's a, it's another thing. That's a, that's another thing and that's, well, these are, these are all under things. What? Thing. Well, another thing is, uh, you, well, you, 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 you wear it under your dress. All this under dress is too much. I not can move. Under this, I not wear it. Johnny. Look, Johnny, if you're gonna live like a white woman, you gotta dress like a white woman. Now, be a good girl. And you go on upstairs and put these things on. And, and put these on too. They're, uh, they're, they're shoes, uh, boots. Indian man, much kinder to woman than white man. Adam, where you been? I was over at Clem White's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that uh, traded some grain for some hogs. No, 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 no. We took care of that three weeks ago. I was over to see about selling him some stock. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I've uh, been leaving everything up to you boys lately. I'm sure to put the extra work on you, but... Uh, we don't mind the extra work. It just... Well, I've been really making some good progress with the girl. She's up in her room now, putting on some decent clothes that I bought her. And then what? Uh, just what is it that you want to do with her? But we gotta prepare for the world. Gotta help her adjust. Expect me to get stinking thing on feet. We want to stay. We can't speak. Let's go yet stay you time. I guess I got him a couple of sizes too small. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it. She'll adjust. Boys noticed uh, Joan's new clothes? Sure, yeah, Pa, they're real nice. Some clothes are it, Paul. Real fashion plate, yes, sir. Look at me. 
Sorry, John. Look at me. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I've been forcing things on you. Trying to make you want things which you didn't want or even care about. So, uh, you're free to go now. Free? Yeah. You mean I do what I want? Yes, of course, son. I'm not your jailer. Good. I go now. Where will you go? Back to my people. You hate the white world so much that you go back to the Paiutes knowing that they'd kill you. There is other tribes. These other tribes? They'd, uh, they'd accept a Paiute cast off, a white girl? Knowing English, my mother teach me, not make me white. She die when I ten. Only world I know is Indian world. Well, I must find our own world to live in. I just hope that our world might please you. So now you can you can pick your own. What's the matter? Joan just came busting through the living room like she's on her way to the fire or something. Yeah, I know. She's going away. Adam, would you saddle her horse for her? It would start, Pa. Should she at least wait until morning? And when you're young and you're running away from something that you're, you're afraid of or you don't understand, I guess it doesn't make any difference whether it's day or night. your way. Are you sure? You sure you want to? Yes. I think about what you say. I try your world and, and see. this shoe, like balancing on stones crossing creek. Well, it takes a little patience. Besides, you haven't buttoned them properly. Now, look, I'm going to show you this, this once more. I never learned to walk in this, or dress right, or eat with fork. Joni, you can do anything you set your mind to do in this world, if you just take a little time and patience. But I start so late to learn what others learn as child. You're not much more than a child yourself. I not child. Why, a son of chief, would marry me. It doesn't make you a woman. Joan, 
In our world, in your world now, people marry for different reasons than they do in the pirate world. Here we uh, usually marry for love. I tell you before, that is word I learn in English, but it is only word. Well, that happens to you. It'll be more than only word. You'll meet someone someday, and he'll be different than other men. And when he talks, his voice will have a special meaning just for you alone. And when he touches you, it'll be as if you've been waiting for that touch all your life. When it happens, you'll know. It's like, like something magic. Yeah. I forget. Boy, I need magic to walk in this stinking. In this shoe. Practice. Let go, bud. What could be so all fired funny in there? Well, whatever it is, it's all right with me as long as it keeps him laughing. like you. You never make mistakes. Oh, don't I? I? Got that dress about ten sizes too big for you, didn't I? <laughs> However, according to Lady Stanhope, men are forgiven mistakes in the social world. Ladies must know. Why don't you leave that alone for a while? There's an article here about Senator Douglas uh, I'd like you to read. He's a man I admire very much. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our... T territory. Territory mm -hmm. will be of vital importance. What are you laughing about? Don't say anything funny. <laughs> I was remembering that book of etiquette I've been reading these last few weeks. Oh, and what did you find amusing about it? Well, it was just that drawing of all those knives and forks, you know, that they use. And here, I struggle with one. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about that. Pa's been lecturing me about them for years, and I still get confused past one of each. Men are forgiven mistakes in the social world, but ladies must know. Now, I wonder who made that proclamation. I think it was Lady Stanhope of England who wrote the Book of Etiquette. I see. Well, I don't think we have to worry about entertaining Lady Stanhope at the Ponderosa. Uh, Adam, excuse me. Um, Joan, did you find anything interesting in the newspaper lately? Yes, I did. I was reading a most interesting article about the silver lobby in Washington. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our territory could well be of vital importance politically. According to Senator Douglas, the economic situation, both for the North and the South, would be unlimited. And so from the time of the Egyptians, 
Silver has influenced the destinies of men and nations, according to Senator Douglas. That's very interesting. According to Senator Douglas. Uh, Joan, I, I, found, I, I found the conversation most informative. Thank you. Well, I will leave you, gentlemen, to your coffee and brandy. I have some sewing waiting for me in my room. admit she's a lot different than she was two months ago when we first saw her. Yeah, she's <clears throat> become an interesting composite. What do you mean? A composite of Lady Stanhope, Senator Douglas, and Ben Cartwright. All right, you accomplished what you set out to do. Well, now what are you going to do with it? You got a plan? Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, I, I do have a plan. She'll have a She'll have what every woman deserves. A chance for her rightful place in society. As a wife. You, uh, <clears throat> you already got somebody picked for her? Well, of course not. She's gonna make her own choice. There are plenty of red-blooded men in the territory. Just where do they get a look at her? What are you, uh, figuring on doing, advertising her? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. In a way. We're going to give a party this Saturday night and invite every eligible bachelor in the territory. She'll be fighting them off by the dozen, you'll see. According to Senator Douglas, if war comes between the states, the silver of our territory could well be of vital importance politically. According to Senator Douglas, the economic possibilities both for the North and the South are enormous. Let us take, for example, ten basic economic advantages for the North. First... Uh, Mr. Mr. Cartwright! Right. Oh, well, uh, don't let me interrupt. Please go on. Oh, no, sir. Uh, not interrupting at all, sir. No, sir. Uh, I believe we could uh, use some of that punch. Yeah. Well, uh, what were you talking about? Senator Douglas's monetary theories. Oh. Well, Jonah, you know, a subject like that doesn't have too much appeal for young fellas. Uh, why don't you talk about other things? What other things? Well, uh, I'll tell you things like, uh, uh... Oh, Tom! Tom Bellow, come on over here. First time I've seen you tonight. Now, you know Joan, of course. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we had a long talk about Senator Douglas. Well, that's not a very exciting subject for a young girl. Now, Tom, I know you can do better than that. I'll tell you what. Why don't, uh, why don't you and Joan go outside, get a breath of fresh air? Show her the moon. Now, there's a subject that young girls never get tired of, see? <laughs> Go ahead now, along with you, both of you. <sighs> Little music. <laughs> uh, Tom Bellows just took Joan out for a walk in the moonlight. Think Lady Stanhope would approve? Well, never mind Lady Stanhope. I think I understand young people better than she does. Which reminds me. I haven't seen you fellas uh, dancing with any of the girls tonight. What girls? Now, you were so busy inviting eligible bachelors, you forgot to invite any eligible girls. I guess I did. Let's stay up! Let's see you dance! And I spit on your grandmother's shadow! Joan, what happened? The Paiutes, they told me about this moon madness. I did not like it. Well, I'll tell that young fella thing or two. No. No, it's not important. Of course it's important. I'm not going to let him spoil your party. Yes, and he told me the reason for this party. If I had known, I could have saved you the trouble. I have no need for these young men. There's no magic with them. No magic. Going to bed. Well, 
That's the last of them. Sorry the party wasn't the success you expected. Well, I'm very surprised at Tom's behavior. Really very surprised. Maybe Tom didn't understand the circumstances. What circumstances? Well, maybe like she said, Paul, she, she just ain't interested in them young fellas. She's <laughs> a young girl. <laughs> maybe she likes more mature men like you. What's all this nonsense about? Well, maybe it ain't so much nonsense, Paul. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe she loves you. That girl doesn't even know the meaning of the word. Oh, indeed I do. Oh, there's some stock that's got to be taken care of out in the barn. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to help, Pa. I'm more practical. I'm going to bed. It took me a long time to realize what had happened to me. Just as it will take you time. No. Take time. You'll realize how right it is. You're the finest, most wonderful man in the world. And I love you very much. Good night, Benjamin. Darling. Benjamin. Breakfast will be ready in a moment. Oh. Uh, well, I'll wash up. That would be all for now, Hobson. Thank you. Benjamin, you've taken time and thought about it. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, Joan, I have. Then you understand. Uh, Joan, I, I want to ask you a question. Where did you get this idea? Last night at the party, when I looked at all those young men, then I looked at you, and then I knew. Because the magic was there. What magic? Well, the magic you told me was love. It happened just as you said it would. Yeah, but... Oh, oh, oh Joan, I, uh, when I told you that, I, I wasn't talking about me. No, no, this, this feeling this that you have... This love I have. This feeling that you have, it, it isn't love, Joan. It's, 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 well, it's what students feel for their teachers sometimes. It's not what you think. I know how I feel. It, it's how you feel that's important. Well, I, I know how... This conversation is ridiculous. Not according to Senator Douglas. Senator, what has Senator Douglas got to do with it? Senator Douglas said that all things can be settled logically if intelligently applied. It has nothing to do with logic. It has to. Uh, Joan, look at me. I'm the proof. Joan, I mean, Look please. at me. Would jo you look at me? I'm looking at you. All right, now. What has this got to do with Senator Douglas's immortal cliches about logic? Am I not what you made me? Did you not say the night of the party that I would make a perfect mate for any man? Well, yes. Yeah. No. I, I would... Yes, as an artist would speak of a creation. There, you admitted it. Admitted what? You said that you created me. <laughs> now, would you create something that you hated, something that you didn't care Joan, about? Joan, well, would it, you? It, no, you wouldn't. You'd create something that you loved. Me. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, love has nothing to do with logic. It uh, has everything to do with... Joan, let me give you a very pertinent logical fact. I'm old enough to be a father. Oh, pooh. If a Paiute's wife dies, he looks for the youngest next wife he can find. Uh, one who can work hard and give him many sons. I, I, Joan, I have enough sons. Well, I'll give you more. Bigger than Hoss, smarter than Adam, and handsomer than little Joe. Joan, now listen to me. I am not the man for you. I'll show you that you are. You hold me. There's uh, an old Paiute custom. Joan, we are not Paiutes. Well, we can borrow the custom for just a little while. Joan, please. Joan, would you stop this? Oh, sorry, Pa. <clears throat> Come in, boys. Benjamin has some news to tell you. I, 
I, I got some chores to do. Benjamin. town to get some things. We uh, look for you, but you were gone. Yeah, well, I uh, had some things to do around the barn. Yeah. You got something on your mind? Hmm? Same thing's on your mind. Joan. She thinks she's gonna marry you. What? That's, that's nonsense. I, I told her so. Well, she thinks she's gonna marry you. It sure isn't nonsense to her. Well, of course it's nonsense. She's not going to marry me. <laughs> She's not in love with me. Well, it may take her time, but she'll realize that. Well, I don't know if you got that much time. You know, one of the things she wanted to look at in town? Wedding dresses. Wedding dresses? Now, you always taught us that the, uh... the hurt you feel when you tell the truth is a little shorter and less painful than the hurt you feel when you, uh, don't face the truth. See the scar. I, I have a close and very dear friend in San Francisco. Her only daughter died about about five years ago, and I know that she would welcome you as a companion, even as a daughter. You don't believe I love you. Well, I, I believe that you're misinterpreting the word. No. You told me. You said. One man will seem different, his voice special, his touch magic. That is how I feel. Joan, the way you feel now, you'll feel so differently five or ten years from now when you're a mature I, woman. I don't care about five or ten years from now. I care about now. I care about how I feel now. But you don't love me, do you? I love you. But not... Not as you you think I... Oh, you want me to love you. I love you as I... As I love Adam, Horse, and little Joe. That isn't what I mean! You, you just don't understand. Maybe I do. The tears for lost youth are just as bitter. The cry, where were you when I was young? Just as painful. You don't love me. You don't love me. I'm consumed with with jealousy and envy for the young man who will one day marry you. I, uh, I wired my friend in San Francisco and I talked to Chief Kiyui again. His son has married and he says that you are welcome Go back to the tribe if you wish. So you see, you you have two worlds from which to choose. Two worlds. I 
have no world. You, you destroyed the world of the Indian for me, and now you've destroyed your world for me, too. San Francisco. I'm sorry you're unhappy. Sorry my father's unhappy. He didn't mean to hurt you. He doesn't care anything about me. I think he cares a great deal. No, he cares nothing. And my life is empty. Your life is just beginning. And I think your heart is a little too young to break. The bruise will heal. But my father, when he thinks of you in the future, will feel sad and guilty. Because he'll remember you now in your unhappiness and blame himself. Well, he should. Why, just because he tried to help you? He's given you a future, no matter what you may think now. And if you love him, give him something, too. Take the guilt away from him. Let him remember you now without unhappiness. You teach as well as your father. Thank you, Adam. Guess we better be getting aboard. Excuse me. Pardon me. Are you going to San Francisco? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh. Well, then we'll be fellow passengers. My name is Joan Wingate. I'm John Turner. Oh. Well, I have the uh, fare all arranged. Well, good. I guess we can get on board. Here, well, let me help you. Oh, well, this is John Turner. He's going to San Francisco, too. How do you do? Turner? Well, goodbye. And thank you, Benjamin. Oh. It's gonna be all right, Adam. Yes, sir, she's gonna be all right. Well, it should be all right, Pa. Why not? She's got everything you taught her. A few of her own. Like courage. Like magic. <laughs> <laughs> 